Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access forms. In this playlist, we've talked about why we create forms and the different tools we can use to create forms. In this screencast, we're going to come up with a new reason to need a form and create it from scratch using the form wizard. And I think that will really drive home why the form wizard is such a great tool to start your forms. Here we are in the sample Northwind database, and let's say that our customer service department needs to be able to look up various information about various invoices when customers call in. We want to give them a form to do that so that they can quickly see and navigate through the records of the database versus picking through the navigation screen. We want to keep them out of this navigation window. We don't want our users working with the tables and the queries. We just want to give them a form that gives them exactly the information they need. The first thing I like to do when I create a new form is to first create a query that gathers all the fields that I need on that form. So let's go into create, create design view and decide upon the fields that we want on this form. Certainly we're going to want customers table which lists customer information. We're going to have to have order information, order detail information which are the line items on each order and also some product description information. And when you see these one to many relationship lines already display in the upper pane of query design view, you know that your relationships have been set up already in the relationships window, and you're working with a solid and healthy database. If you do not see these one-to-many relationship lines in the query design view, that means your tables have not been related at a lower level. And I would encourage you to go back to set that up because proper relationships between your tables is absolutely necessary for any queries, forms, or reports to work correctly. If the relationships aren't set up correctly, you're wasting your time building queries, forms, and reports. But the Northwind database has already taken care of that. So one customer can have many orders, one order can have many line items or order details, and one product can be on many different line items for different customers. So what we really need in this simple form is the company name, and let's also pull in the order date of the order, and then we want to know everything that was on that order. The price, the quantity, the discount if there is any, and the product name. Uh, let's also pull in the product ID. And I'll put that as my third field by simply dragging it to the third column. I'm going to save that query with the name customer invoice lookup. I'm going to use it for a form called customer invoice lookup. You do not have to name your queries the same thing as your forms. But you do want to have some sort of naming convention that's used consistently throughout your database. So let's look at the records that are selected by this query. When I hit the datasheet view button, see what records and fields were selected in this query. And I see that I have 2,155 records in my navigation screen. This represents every line item on every order for every customer. And I can immediately see that although I have the company name and the order date, it would be very handy to also have the order ID. I'm going to go back to design view, grab that order ID field, put it in as my second field, back to datasheet view, look at that. And yes, now when the customer calls into the customer service center and asks about an order ID, I can quickly see all the line items and all the products on that order. Let's save and close this query. And now that we've got everything set up, we're ready for the form wizard. I'm going to click the form wizard button and go to that customer invoice lookup query. And yes, I could have picked through the tables and selected those fields individually in the form wizard. But by having them organized in this customer invoice lookup query, it'll be easy to add fields later on or add some criteria to select only certain records should I need to. So I've got all my fields organized in that customer invoice lookup query. I'm going to select them all, click next on the form wizard. And this is the real power of organizing your tables in proper relationships and building a query before you get into the form wizard. So the form wizard now is showing me different ways to organize the information I've selected in the query on a form. If I choose to view the data by customers, then I'm going to get two subforms because one company can have many orders and one order can have many line items. Or I might want to look at the data by orders. If I look at it by orders, then all the information about the order, including the company name, show up in the main form, and I only get one subform, the line items on that order. If I look at the data by order details, I don't get any subforms. I just get all the fields on the main form. And if I look at the information by products, 
then the product name is in the main form, and all the rest of the fields are then in the subform. So this is awesome. This form wizard is recognizing the one-to-many relationships between the tables and the fields that you've selected in this query and is giving you options as to how you want your form to be set up. Let's go by customers and then we'll come back and do it again by orders to see the difference. But if we look at the data by customers, we're going to get two subforms, one company with many orders and then one order with many line items. Next, we're being asked for the layout for each of the subforms, tabular or data sheet. Both of them put the fields in a horizontal orientation. I'm just going to go with data sheet on this. And then next, I'm actually creating three forms with this form wizard. The main form, which is going to be customer invoice lookup form, and then a subform, which is an orders subform, and then the line items ordered details subform. So we're creating three forms in one pass of the form wizard. Two of the forms are going to be subforms to the main form to show the one to many relationships between these tables. Fantastic. When I finish, it's not a particularly gorgeous layout, but the details are there. And I can go into design view and resize and move the fields around to be a little more aesthetically pleasing. But let's examine this. For Alfred's Future Fist, we see they've made seven orders. On the first order, there's three line items. On the second order, there's three line items. On the third order, as I select these orders, you see the subform details, the line items changing to reflect the items that were purchased on that particular order. So their third order only had one line item. Their fourth order, two line items. As I move to the next customer, we evidently have 91 customers because I see the navigation bar shows 91 for Alfred's Future Kist, and the main form is showing us our customers. If I go to the second customer, I see they've made four. Here's my navigation bar for the first subform. They have four orders. The first order has two line items. The second order has three line items, and so forth. So the moral to the story is when your tables are set up correctly and when your queries are set up correctly, all the other tools such as the form wizard and the report wizard really work for you because they understand the relationships between your data and they present it as such. So using the form wizard is the easy part of this YouTube. It's the setup and the preparation of your data and your relationships and your queries that's the hard part, and I cannot overemphasize how important that is. Let's go ahead and save this and close it, and let's run through that form wizard one more time using a different option. Form wizard, let's go for the customer invoice lookup. Let's select all the fields again next. And this time, instead of viewing the data by company name and then showing the orders and the details, let's go by orders. Now, that's only going to give us one subform we can see in the wizard here because it's putting the company name, order ID, and order date, all those fields in the main form, and then just showing us the line items in the subform. Next, again, it's asking us some layout questions, which we'll choose. I'm going to call this customer order lookup two and order subform two. Finish. And in this case, again, we have some resizing to do so that we can see all the data clearly but we have one company and one order ID in the main form and then the details of that order in the subform. This time I'm only looking at 830 records and that's because I've got 830 order IDs and it's a little more clear now that Alfred Buterkis' first order, 10248, has three line items. Alfred has ordered multiple times, but as I move through the records, we're seeing Alfred, Alfred's company name multiple times we're seeing that the order ID is changing. And when we get to the eighth order, I can see a new customer name. One other thing that's so important that I want to show you is in design view, when we have a form or a subform, the most important property of that form is the record source property. Because the record source property of a form identifies the fields that were selected for that form or subform. You open up the property sheet for form by double clicking this little in the upper left hand corner or you could select it and click the property sheet to toggle that on and off and we can see at the top of the property sheet what's been selected on the data tab 
the record source property determines what records were selected for this form. So if you wanted to modify the fields or records that are available to this form, that's where you go, to the record source property on the data tab. If I open my field list, I only have three fields available to this main form. If I wanted another field available to that form, I'd have to go to the property sheet, go to the record source property, and build with the build button so that I could select more fields or records for this query. Because remember, after all, all a query is is a name given to an SQL statement. When we're selecting fields for a form or a report, the SQL statement starts with the keyword select. So that's the power of the form wizard. That's the most important property of a form, the record source property. And stay with me with this playlist and we will continue to build our form development skills and work with the different types of controls on a form. Thank you.